Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the more notable, surprising changes of the newest electrical code, which eliminates the requirement for outlets at islands and peninsulas in kitchens. Okay, that was a mouthful. So yeah, this is a surprising change. Where do I start with this? July 1st of this year, 2023, Minnesota adopted a new electrical code. We use the National Electrical Code, also referred to as the NEC. We adopt that code in full. We take the whole thing, we don't make any modifications, any changes to it. We adopt the whole thing and that becomes our code. That is our electrical rule in Minnesota. Our previous version was the 2020 NEC. Now we're on the 2023. This means that if you pull a permit, if you have pulled a permit on July 1st of this year or any time after that, any of the work you do needs to conform to the newest code. If you had pulled a permit on June 30th or any time before that, whether you've started the work or not, it's all, it all depends on when you pull the permit, whether you have started the work or not, your work needs to conform to the old version of the code, the 2020 version. So there's, there's the dividing line of which code you need to be on. And so with the 2023 code, there was a lot of changes that took place. There's always a ton of changes. We had John Williamson, past electrical, uh, chief electrical inspector for the state of Minnesota. We had him on our podcast and I talked to him for about an hour, Tessa and I did, asking him a bunch of questions, going over what I think are some of the most notable changes that home inspectors ought to be aware of with this new electrical code. So we talked about a lot of different stuff, but the biggest surprise to me, for as long as I've been a home inspector, I, I started getting into this thing in 97, going all the way back to then and who knows how far prior to that, it's been required that if you have an island or a peninsula in a kitchen, you need to have outlets. And when I say outlet, I'm using the term generically, really more specifically, if we're going to be geeky about this, I ought to call it a receptacle. A receptacle is always an outlet, but an outlet is not always a receptacle. I'm not going to get into the differences right now, but what I'm talking about, when I say outlet, I'm talking about the thing that you plug a cord into. So that's what I'm referring to. And for the longest time, it's been a requirement. You got an island, you need to have an outlet there. The whole idea is that if someone wants to set up a crock pot, they're not gonna have to run an extension cord from another countertop surface across an area where someone's gonna walk, where it might become a hazard for convenience sake. You've always had to have an outlet there. But the Consumer Product Safety Commission, or CPSC, has found tons and tons of reports. I've heard like in the tens of thousands possibly about kids grabbing onto cords, sticking out the side of an island that's going to say, I don't know, a deep fryer filled with boiling oil or maybe a crock pot with some ridiculously hot liquid in there. The kids will grab onto that and they'll give it a yank and then it comes down on them and they get just ridiculously bad burns or even deaths have occurred. So the CPSC has said, hey, having outlets on the side of islands is not actually doing us any good. It's actually causing more harm than good. And the latest version of the electrical code made some significant changes in that department. And the changes come under section 210.52C2 which is the section for required outlets for countertops and work surfaces. Under the section for required outlets, they no longer require you have this installed. They say, you gotta do one of three things. One of them, well, you take your pick. One of them is you provide a means for a future outlet. So you gotta either run power to that island, and that could be in the form of maybe running some NM cable through the floor and then popping it up into the cabinet and terminating it inside of a junction box. Or you could maybe just run a chaseway. You run some conduit into that island, terminate the conduit in a junction box, and in the future, if somebody wants to add an outlet, they could fish wires through there. So that, the, the authority having jurisdiction would likely approve that scenario too. 
So that, that's one option is you provide a means for a future outlet. Option number two is you install an outlet above the working surface, the, above the countertop. And let's say you got a two tier island, like you got your work surface here, and then you got this little tier that comes up here. You can install it on the wall there, kind of like I'm showing in this illustration, which I swiped from NFPA. Thank you guys. That would be another option. Uh, and the whole idea there is it's not within reach of a little kid. And then the third option is you can install a UL, a, a listed pop up outlet. I shouldn't say UL, it might not be UL who lists them, but it's a listed pop-up outlet intended for installation in this, in this location. It means they've tested it, they pour a whole ton of water on top and it's not gonna leak in. And the outlet pops up out of the surface, out of the work surface of the countertop. That would also be an acceptable installation. I've heard that this has created some challenges for builders trying to install those because now the outlet is taking up real estate space that drawers used to take up. So it's interfering with kitchen drawers and they got to modify drawers to get these outlets to fit in the countertop spaces. So I've heard it's not all that easy to do. And a lot of times people are just opting to install a, a future means for an outlet. So those are the three options that people have now. Those are the three requirements. Now I've I watched another video and I was actually directed to this video by the fine folks over at CodeCheck who know what they're talking about. I trust everything they tell me. And as it, as it turns out, this, this section of the code deals with required outlets. So they're saying that you are no longer required to have an outlet installed here. However, you can still install an outlet on the side of that island under a different section of the code. I think it might not be a wise thing to do knowing all of the injuries that have happened, but I, I guess I would be wrong to technically say that outlets are prohibited here. I'm just going to say that outlets are no longer required here under this section of the code. And if you're going to install an outlet at the island, it ought to conform with this next section of the code, which happens to be 210.52c three where they talk about where the outlets can be installed so that's that's the big change uh, bottom line is that we don't need to see outlets installed at countertops anymore or, excuse me we don't need to see outlets installed at islands and peninsulas anymore what am i going to say about this as a home inspector probably nothing when i see that there is no outlet installed i'm not going to mention it if i happen to see an outlet installed there like on every existing house, I'm not gonna say anything about that either. I know that there is an increased risk, but there's a ton of risks about a ton of things in houses. I don't point out to parents that stairways are a hazard for kids to fall down. I don't point out that every electrical outlet without tamper resistant uh, receptacles is a potential shock hazard for kids. There's a million things I could be talking about for child safety. This is just one of them. We have changed the code to make things safer, but it's not going to make my home inspection reports. So that's where I'm at with it. I guess we'll wait to see what other home inspectors do. Okay, that's my summary of this change in the NEC, this big change. Again, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.